Welcome to the Daily Decrypt, where currency competition doth threaten to or whelm. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by Exmo. New Bits is a cryptocurrency network where every token, every new bit, is pegged to the value of a US dollar, and this is achieved via supply manipulation. How does this work? Or as I've heard it put before online, what black magic is this? To find out, I've spoken with Pascal Hadiki Hamonic, who is a core team member. First, I asked about his role there. So basically, I'm helping with the marketing in Japan, mm-hmm. and also, uh, you know, recruiting, you know, engineers for programmers for the for the core, uh, you know, for for the development. Newbits was launched in the fall of 2014 and is based on Peercoin, which was the first proof of stake network. Newbits incorporates a template called PeerShares, which creates two tokens for a network, the intended currency token, in this case the Newbits, and the intended shareholder and voting token, new shares. And why would anyone want to be a new shareholder? Well, based on the performance of the network, new share tokens pay dividends in Peercoin. The new share is just a share of the network that represents some kind of ownership, right? So, uh, so people are holding those new shares in order to vote, right? Let's say that let's say you have like one percent of the new shares, then you would uh, have one percent of vote, voting power, right? And use okay. and you use that for you know voting anything. Like you can uh, vote for grants, or you can vote for uh, any kind of proposal that have okay. a hash, or you can vote for uh, transaction fees. This kind of stuff, oh, or even yeah. par- parking rates, right? What's the parking thing? What's that? Parking rates, basically, uh, people can, I mean, surely can vote for, you know, the, uh, well, uh, it was, you know, it's not used, currently is not used, I mean, it hasn't been used for one year because, you know, uh, we had, uh, have, we have had enough liquidity to, to maintain the peg, but let's say that uh, we see a decrease in the in the buy side liquidity, then it means that you know the peg could be in danger, and then we we uh, we ask I mean we incentivize people to basically park the new bits, uh, freeze the new bits into the blockchain so that their those new bits are not on the market, and then uh, people uh, will get some reward for that. And it, is, and it corresponds to the parking rate. And just how does one become a shareholder? A new shareholder in the new network. In in new, anybody can be a shareholder at least if she or he has uh, ten thousand shares, new shares, which is not that you know expensive right now because one share is one. I think it's zero uh, point two cents. So it's not you know anybody can with some some little bit of money can be a shareholder and can mm-hmm. vote. You know mm-hmm. so it's. In addition to the parking of new bits to maintain the dollar peg, Pascal then went on to describe how new shareholders are also tasked with voting on budget proposals or making grants. They ask for grants, so you know they would ask for you know I don't know, depending on the job, um, one thousand new bits or five thousand new bits or even twenty thousand new bits for for a project, and so they would basically uh, write a proposal on the forum. They would hash the test, the text, so that you know we have uh, some kind of uh, uh, you know identification, and then they they would uh, you know uh, wait for. I mean, they would try to get the vote from the shareholders, right? So the shareholders would uh, that want to vote for this proposal, they would uh, just put the hash into the client, and then uh, if it reaches uh, more than fifty. Fifty uh, percent of the vote, then the the grant would be, I mean, uh, yeah, the grant would be automatically generated from the in the blockchain, mm-hmm. and then now, uh, the, yeah, the person would just receive the the new bits into the address that she or has or she or his uh, specified. If if the demand for new bits at any given time is not going up but rather going down. Are the in, are the people running nodes and like the new shareholders? Are they like just not paid at that time? Is that how it has to work? No, uh, I mean the, the, the you would still receive uh, you know uh, uh, minting reward, of course. 
And so and do they get paid in new bits or? Ah, uh, no, no, it's new shares. the The block reward is 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 in is in new shares. The block reward is in new shares. Yeah, okay. but uh, if the demand is 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 I mean decreases a lot, which means that the peg could be in danger. So then. Uh, uh, we'll have to, I think right now, the, the ultimate solution would be to issue, to, to produce new new shares, you know, so that we can, you know, I mean, so it would uh, cause some dilution, but mm -hmm. shareholders would be able to get some, uh, you know, some, I mean, some funding, you know, mm -hmm. in the form of Bitcoin, and then we'll have, we'll be able to replenish the, the buy side from there. Mm -hmm. And so with the block reward being new shares, not new bids, um, can new bits just be like created on demand the way they can be like parked on demand? Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But we have uh, we 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 it's we have to uh, to have some kind of I mean to have some consensus, right? So mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. will have to vote to, uh, to sorry to vote for that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't get the fifty percent uh, vote, then nothing is happening on the blockchain, right? So. I then asked how, in light of the peg to the dollar, grants, that is, newly created new bits, could possibly be issued to developers and workers and still keep the peg. If there are, let's say, 50,000 new bits that are issued, then the network should, I mean, be able to, you know, maintain the peg for those 50,000 new bits, right? Well, basically, uh, the, the stability of new bits is, uh, is enabled by, you know, maintaining huge sells and sell and buy uh, walls on markets so we would make sure that you know that we have uh, enough uh, liquidity all the time uh, basically right now it's uh, all done manually i mean uh, we have some of course some indicators we have uh, we can know we, we we can get to know the in real time the, liqu the liquidity situations you know? so liquidity is everything in i mean in limits, you know, uh, in, in, if you want to know the uh, health of the peg, so we will know exactly how much new, uh, uh, how much sell side and uh, how much uh, buy side liquidity we have. Uh, sell side means, you know, how much new bits uh, are in, are in, uh, sold into the market, you know, and buy side means, you know, how much BTC uh, or or buying new bits into the market. So. So depending on the balance that we have between the sell side and buy sides, mm -hmm. then uh, we will get to know the health. Uh, let's say that we have much more buy side, buy side than the sell side. That means that there is some demand for new bits. And then we'll uh, replenish the sell side by using new, bit, new, new bits. But uh, on the contrary, if we have uh, uh, much more sell side than the buy sides, that means you know people are selling more new bits than they are buying. That means, you know, it could be in danger and then we would uh, basically replenish the buy sides by, you know, uh, transferring some Bitcoins from the reserve that we have into the, the buy side. Or uh, we, if we don't have enough uh, BTC, then we will start to, uh, you know, to increase the repacking rates. And mm -hmm. if it's not enough, then we will have to issue new new shares so that we can, you know, have some funding and then, you know, replenish from there. The decision are taken, you know, by, you know, discussing the things, so it would be on the forum right now. But in the future, we, uh, we are thinking about, you know, uh, making automatic some aspects of that. So, you know, especially there is some, uh, what we call a float reserve, which is, you know, uh, basically float means, I don't remember, it's first liquidity something. It's a set of... Uh, of users or, or you know shareholders that uh, that uh, control a multisig uh, wallet that contains some reserve. So right now, uh, if there is some lack of B or, or buy side, then uh, we will decide to the float team would re decide to to uh, you know uh, and freeze some bitcoins from the reserve. So it, and it would be done like manually, but in the future it could be some aspect of the, it could be done automatically by, by using some kind of script. 
I then asked Pascal about the risks of being pegged to a fiat currency like the US dollar. Should some sort of hyperinflationary event take place, what would the new network do? Uh, maybe it's pegged to the US dollar, and the US dollar is like, you know, uh, hyper, it could be, might be in the future hyperinflated. I, I, personally, I don't see that happening, you know, but if it happens, then we'll have to decide to peg to uh, something else. So we, we are we have plans to to create new uh, new pe uh, new pegs like to to the yuan and to the euro, which could be also hyperinflated, you know, as as the uh, but uh, and also to the SDR, which is the as you said as you know the special uh, drawing rights, right? Mm -hmm. So in that case, we hope to have more stability. But the, at the end, I mean, it could be also to uh, to something else like a basket of commodities, or you know, mm -hmm. as long as we have a way to you know to have some mm -hmm. to have some external uh, you know indicators of the of the, of the price, then we could do that, right? And could you stay on the same network and just do like a fork, basically? Like it would it would be same same blockchain, just fork it to track a new commodity? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we 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 can include new. Uh, new currency inside the blockchain, yes. And in fact, pegs to other fiats via other networks is exactly where the new team is headed. Right now, I mean, uh, we have, first of all, we have, uh, we are renaming the new bits, the US new bits, you know. So, in the, so because in the future, uh, new, new future, we'll have uh, the Chinese new bits and also the SDR new bits and the U European new bits, so, yeah. So right okay. now the N NBT is re is being rebranding or renamed US US N NBT. All right. Well, thanks for your time, Pascal. And, thank you. Um, thank you for your time, Amanda. Yeah. All right. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Exmo.com, a fiat and cryptocurrency trading platform that's beginning a week long Dash giveaway today. If you are a member of dashtalk.org and you have between 50 and 100 profile posts, send a private message to Exmo and you'll receive X code in return, which can be retrieved for real Dash at exmo.com. And dear Daily Decrypt viewers, I would like, if you would oblige me, for your music suggestions in the comment section today. I can't promise anything, and I am confident that some, if not many of you, have what I would consider to be poor taste in music, but I am looking to spice things up all of the time and would appreciate your input should you care to give it. Bye-bye. Today we've spoken with Alejandro Colorado, Alex for short. And I used to do a fiat to Bitcoin and I was doing hedging. But it was always like this thing like, well, I'm going jumping in and out of crypto and it will be great if you can just do it crypto to crypto. Because mm -hmm. I only I'm only interested on the on the value, on the on the valuation of the of the of the coin. So um, when I when I learn about Bitcoin thanks uh, Anubis, thanks to you. Uh, I was like, well, this, this might be uh, a great thing.